Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask All of the Violin Maker. And today's episode is literally an Ask All of episode. And it was originally live and then I took a look back at it and our internet is so terrible here in Australia where I live that uh, I just can't leave it up on YouTube. So I'm doing a new one. Uh, so I'm basically going to say exactly the same thing I said in the live. Uh, obviously, um, it's going to be slightly different because I'm not a robot. Um, so anyway, I've just been on holidays and we managed to get, I managed to get to, um, or we managed to get to a beautiful beach uh, just north of Brisbane and uh, literally just hang out, chill out for about two weeks. Uh, I got to go to the beach, uh, we did some beautiful walks to one of my favourite headlands in the world. It was also a nice place to just sit and, and you know, kind of almost meditate and just look out at the ocean. And it also kind of helped me kind of get a whole overview of, you know, of a little bit of my life and what's happening. Uh, but also it kind of helped me plan a little bit um, and think a bit a little bit about how I can help the string community um, and so I got a whole lot of ideas of some of the videos and some of the things I can do over then this year uh, to uh, to support the string community anyway happy 2021 as well hope this year turns out to be a good one for everyone it you know might not be super easy i know we're very lucky here in australia uh with very few active cases uh, there's no cases in the community known cases in the community and uh so we're very, very, very lucky, you know, we can actually wander around without masks, uh, go to cafes and do that kind of thing. And I know people around the world are struggling and I know how hard it is. Um, so we're so lucky that we actually have our instruments to kind of help us, um, you know, to, to kind of help us go within. And also it's a great time actually to pick up your instrument and, you know, le learn that difficult piece you've been wanting to learn for such a long time or do, uh, you know, or do something you haven't done before or just to just just express yourself or to just connect with other people and actually do things through um, through video call or Zoom or something. Anyway, today is all about your questions. So I'm going to get to the first question. So the first question is, when do, how do I know when it's time to upgrade my instrument? And uh, the short answer here is when the instrument is starting to hold you back. And, uh, and uh, the, your instrument can hold you back in different ways. In some ways mean that you don't actually have to buy a new instrument. So sometimes it's actually just the setup of the instrument that's holding you back. So you can go to a violin maker and get your instrument optimized and it can, uh, you know, make life a lot easier. Uh, I'll just show you, for example, uh, on this beautiful uh, uh, Carolus Maurizzi violin, like it's an Italian violin from the early 1900s. Um, for example, if the string height um, uh, on the, you know, on the nut or on the bridge is too high, it can make your playing really horrible. Um, or if the bridge isn't so good or the sound isn't really working uh, because the instrument hasn't been set up well, you know, that makes it not a lot of fun. Or if your pegs aren't working well. So these are all things that a... Um, that a violin maker can fix and uh, and so you might be able to tweak your own instrument and getting work get it working better but then there are um, there are times when an instrument has just reached its upper limit and uh, you're not going to get a better sound out of it it's not gonna um, yeah so you wouldn't get a better sound out of it and you uh, literally, you know, everything's holding you back about it. So that's when it's time to upgrade. And what kind of instrument to get? I always say, 
spend as much as you can afford uh, within within limits, of course, you know, depending on what your goals are as a violinist. Um, so, um, you know, if you're a beginner or something like that, uh, for an, for around a thousand, eleven hundred dollars, you can actually get some really nice instruments. Uh, my Garibaldi is a good example. It's one thousand one hundred Australian dollars, and it has a beautiful sound. And everything's right about it. So it's got a nice, um, it's it's got good timber. It's got great, um, great varnish. Has a lovely sound. And then of course my master setup, which makes life a lot easier. But then if you're looking at something a little bit better, um, you know, and and if you have a little bit of money to spend, an instrument like the uh, Salvatore Lombardi or the Ziada could really work. Like it's, you know, it's a step up. It's about five thousand, five and a half thousand dollars. You know, there are instruments in between. There are lots of different instruments, but uh, you know, those kinds of instruments uh, are really beautiful as well. I recently showed how I set one up. Uh, this is. Uh, this is my Lombardi violin that I set up recently and I really love the way it sounds, the way it looks and the way it's made. It's been made for me uh, together with some of my makers that I work with. Uh, absolutely love it. Um, uh, and then, you know, if you have a lot of money to spare, you may also consider an antique instrument or or a high level instrument, they start at around sort of maybe six, seven thousand upwards. Uh, you know, you might like something like, you know, for example, I have like this nice um, Klotz violin, which, um, which is an antique instrument. It was made in the early 1800s. So it was um, towards the late part of Beethoven's life or the early romantic period that the instrument was made and and you you know you have this special connection with that part of history uh, you know which is really exciting uh, I've got um, some instruments that are from the 1700s you know from Mozart's time I mean how cool is it to play an instrument from that time but then there are some really wonderful makers today you know all over the world there are some great violin makers that make amazing instruments and if you're looking for a good sounding instrument and a good solid instrument you know really well made new instrument could work as well uh, if you're a beginner it might just be you know stepping up to that $500 mark you know getting an instrument that's actually just gonna work better than that beginner instrument or even if you have a VSO, a violin shaped object. Uh, so yeah, uh, so when your instrument is holding you back, that's when it's time to upgrade. So the next question is about fine tuners on your instrument. Uh, you know, is it a good or a bad thing to have fine tuners on your instrument? Uh, Look, um, I know there's uh, this thing going around that if you have more than one fine tuner on your instrument that, you know, you're maybe less of a player. I honestly don't believe that. For me, what's important is that a player is comfortable, that they can easily tune the instrument and, you know, that they get enjoyment out of the playing. And the tailpiece is not an important part of that. So usually most tailpieces just come with the tailpiece with the one fine tuner attached. But, uh, but you know, if you're finding difficulties tuning the other strings than the highest strings, you might attach more fine tuners. The problem with that is that you add a lot of weight to the tailpiece, and that can actually cause the instrument to sound slightly muted. Um, and you don't want, uh, you know, you don't want your instrument to be muted. That's not great. So what uh, a company called Whitner and some other companies have done is they've developed a thing called a fine tuning tailpiece. So the tailpiece actually has the fine tuners already built in. So this one has four fine tuners built in and it actually weighs the same as a normal tailpiece with just the one fine tuner. So that's pretty exciting. Um, which means, you know, if you're having some difficulties tuning, you can get one of those installed and it makes life a lot easier. 
Um, by the way, if you ever get a new fine tuner, uh, the the screws should be out, uh, you know, quite far um, as far as you can get them because uh, the tr strings will always go lower and then eventually the fine tuners are turned all the way in. Um, so yeah, if you know if you're having difficulties, definitely use fine tuners. I've seen people actually get repetitive strain injury from trying to turn hard to turn pegs. Um, yeah, and 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 I'll show you how fine tuners work, and you probably know it. Um, if I get my oh. so if the if the instrument's slightly out of tune, so the E string's a bit low here. Um, it's actually quite easy to turn tune with a fine tune. Have a look how quick it is. And it's in tune. Uh, if you're using the pegs, it can be much more difficult. I'll, um, I'll just try and tune it with the pegs. This peg's a bit loose too. still can't do it so I'm gonna go back to fine tuners <laughs> so it's super quick the E string is the hardest string to tune so that's why the E string has the fine tuner the other strings can actually be tuned quite well uh, without a fine tune I'll show you like it's actually quite easy all right so let's get to the next question actually Coralie just told me before that uh, uh, just just reminded me so a group of guys called got together uh, called the two set orchestra and they put together a piece like a collaborative piece to celebrate two set reaching the three million uh, subscriber mark, Woohoo! go two set! That's great, well done. Uh, that's that's amazing effort for a uh, you know for a string based and classical music based uh, uh, community. So it's really exciting, and I'm also personally really grateful for two set having reached three million viewers, and and I'm also grateful for two set. Um, helping me um and doing some collaborations with me where i've been able to help their community understand musical instruments better uh because you know that they, they really know their stuff with playing and and you know what it's like to be a violinist but my uh, specialty of course is being a violin maker and understanding the actual instrument so i've been able to really help the two set community learn a lot more about how the instrument works and uh, because i think it's really important if you're a string player to actually know how your instrument works and the things you need to do to keep your instrument working well because you know, it will actually help you be a better player. Um, a lot of teachers don't even learn some of the things that I um, that I present. So this is really important and this is great. So go to set, go to set orchestra. I'll actually put the link in below so you can see it. Today in my live video, uh, Coralie actually helped me. She read a lot of the questions to me. Uh, she's not here now because I'm doing the remake. Um, so you guys can actually see it clearly and obviously um, I'm you know I'm not gonna say exactly the same thing great thing that I wanted to say it was wonderful to see so many people on from all over the world there were people from the Philippines America New Zealand Europe um, uh, there was someone from Holland uh, my surname actually originates from the north uh, the south of Holland uh, so that's kind of exciting um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, people from different countries in Asia, Australia, and literally all over the world. So that's really exciting. Now, the next question was about a bow rehair. Like when, how do you know that your bow needs a rehair? And uh, the quickest, uh, you know, the, the uh, quickest, easiest answer is you look at the bow, you look at it, uh, look down the bow, 
into a light source and if the hair looks really shiny you probably need a rear hair you you can also hear um, you can actually also hear if your bow needs a rehair because if the bow is a bit worn uh, the thing that keeps it playing is all the rosin and it makes it sound scratchy I did actually do a video on bow rehairs recently so I would recommend looking at that I also did a video on choosing a bow I had some questions about choosing your bow so please look back on my videos there is actually one about choosing a bow and trying out bows um, now, uh, someone commented on red hair, um, that they'd like red hair. Yeah, look, uh, I'm probably not going to do that. I did come across, uh, uh, like I actually did a rehair for a, a heavy metal violinist where I went kind of black, white, black. So it had a bit of a zebra look. And the reason behind it, oh, actually it was just one side black, one side white. And uh, the reason behind it, I wanted them to be able to have that really gritty, death metal sound uh, with a black hair and then if they wanted to play something smoother they could just turn the bow a bit and play something a bit more smoother it was a lot of fun um, and uh, I think the, the violinist actually really liked it <clears throat> someone did ask about the winding uh, on here you know whether you can use stainless steel I personally actually haven't come across stainless steel. Now, um, they also asked about copper winding. Now, copper winding really tarnishes and corrodes from, from the perspiration or the sweat that comes off your fingers. Um, stainless steel obviously wouldn't do that, but I, I haven't come across stainless steel winding. And I could imagine that it would actually be quite difficult to wind. So usually it's silver or gold winding on there, and, and there's also a... Uh, uh, what they call whalebone, but I, I'm not quite sure. I think it's usually a synthetic material that they wind, uh, wind it with. So silver winding is very good because it doesn't corrode too much, but uh, yeah, just a little bit and uh, and uh, uh, protects the bow really well. Okay, so there was a question. My sound post fell down and I actually don't have a violin maker near me. <clears throat> now that's a real problem. Um, you, you don't try to set it up yourself. It's actually, you can actually damage the instrument. So um, look, for example, I've seen people, amateurs try, this This is the, um, the cup of coffee, which uh, some people call the cup of coffee uh, violin. Um, and uh, if you look inside here in the top plate, I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually um, a lot of yeah, a really rough area right here where the sound post sits, and uh, and so uh, some violin, uh, some some people have actually jammed the sound post in really tightly and damaged the top plate. So uh, <clears throat> so the sound post would just be you know would just be sitting sitting here like this. And if someone, like if it's not fitting properly, like if it's at an angle and not fitting properly, it can actually, uh, you know, if someone fits it badly, it can really cause damage. So what I suggest to do, if you're in an area and you can't find a violin maker, try and find a violinist uh, if and, and or a community of violinists in your area. And if there's someone, ask them what they do. Who do they go to? But you, you really do need to go to a professional maker or someone who has got some experience with adjusting a sound post. One thing I did want to say about the bow rehair, how often, to, uh, this is from earlier, I'm sorry I'm going back a little bit, how often to get your bow rehair is, uh, I've got clients who get their, uh, that are soloists, who get their bow re rehaired every two to five, uh, sorry, every five to ten concerts. So they can need a rehair after two weeks of playing. But then my, my standard, a lot of clients uh, have rehairs about once every one to two years. And then I have some hobby players that don't need a rehair for maybe three or four years. Uh, you just kind of have to see how the hair goes and if it still makes a good sound. That's really important. 
Anyway, that's all the questions. I just want to quickly talk a little bit about next year. I've got lots of exciting stuff planned. I really, you know, as I was saying when I was sitting by the ocean and thinking a little bit about the future, um, I, I was really thinking how I can best support the string community. So I've got a, f uh, a lot of ins uh, uh, I've got a lot of videos planned to really help you get become better violinists or better string players. I've got a few with some exercises. As you know, I'm not a great violinist, but I do know what kind of exercises work because I have talked to thousands of string players and thousands, you know, and I've, I've talked to a lot of good string players and they've told me what works for them. Um, the, um, the other thing I'll talk about is to I'll teach you a lot more about the instrument. I'll show you a lot more about what I'm doing. And I'm looking at uh, connecting, uh, I'll be connecting with quite a few um, well-known players uh, and, uh, and interviewing them. So that's really exciting as well. So look out for those videos throughout the year. Uh, it's, it's, Apart from that, you know, I know it's been a really difficult time. Use your instrument to help you through this time. Do some playing, connect with other players. Use the instrument to es express your emotions and, and <clears throat> you know, to really help you through this time. I know it's a tough, it's been a tough year and especially a tough winter for a lot of people. And so I'm really hoping this year is going to become easier. I think things will ease up, but I, you know, I still think it's not going to be super easy. So I'm, you know, my heart goes out to you. I, I really think of, of you and, and, you know, all the players around the world, you know, players who've lost their gigs and uh, their concerts and things like that. You know, it's, it's, that's really tough. And, you know, and unfortunately, the arts is one of the earlier things that go uh, where the funding goes. I've seen that in Australia. It, it makes me sad, but it's un the unfortunate truth. Um, so anyway, I'm with you guys. Uh, I love that you watch me. I love my community. I love hanging out with string players. So keep watching. I'm going to do some more actual live videos. I'll try and change the time because I realized that the upload speeds are just terrible. This uh, the time of the morning I was uploading this one. So I'm going to find a better time when there are better speeds. Um, Apart from that, yeah, keep well. Uh, remember to like this video, subscribe, and write any other questions in your comments. I will keep the other in, um, the other video archived so I can see there were a lot of questions. But keep asking questions in the comments. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and watching me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.